Good morning. Day 213. Cooking down the refrigerator, freezer, and pantry meals. So today is going to be a beautiful 87 degrees. There isn't a whole lot of breeze going. A little bit. Oh, actually, now that I look out the window, there is a breeze going. Yay! So, this morning when I got up, I was looking at my shelves, and I decided I need to style them. Now, they're not done. I still have some cubbies that I need to finish. But I have it set up the way I want it. And I have to put beans and rice and some other things into my um, mason jars. But it's looking pretty good, I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Too much? Not enough? Just right? Um, I actually wanted them to be pretty, but I also wanted them to be functional. So I didn't always have to go in the basement and get my beans and things out of the stash. So um, that was my intention when I put up these open shelves. So I've got my old friend, my favorite coffee mug here. I brought it out, but it's splashing all over the place. But. I can fix that. So any t anyway, today I'm going to take it easy. Oh, it's making a mess. <laughs> and this is why I use the other coffee mug. But they're all dirty. <laughs> but today I'm going to take it easy because I am pretty sore from climbing up and down the ladder all day yesterday. I forgot my creamer. So now that I've got my vibe going on putting up shelves, I want to get some shelves for down in the basement to put up for my um, prepper stash. I have some freestanding shelves that I need to put together. But storing vertically is always a great idea. And you can style it nicely. It doesn't have to look like clutter. At least that's my opinion. So I think I'm going to have a continental breakfast this morning. And to me, a continental breakfast means French bread and cheese and... I think that'll be very tasty. All right, I'll be back once I get my coffee and drink some of that and chill out a little bit. And then I'll have my breakfast. Day 213. Hello. Well, I went out for a little bit today and um, our Markdown Flash food uh, in, in town and one in another town they're both close within within five miles they had a couple of really good deals that I just couldn't pass up so I ended up um, they had plus they had a six dollar off coupon if you spent more than twelve dollars so I ended up and I know I don't want to restock the freezer right now, but I just couldn't pass up this deal. So they had two of these packages. They were marked down to $2.99. So I got both of what I got what they had. Got two of those. And these were marked down to $4.99. So I got three of these and I ended up just paying um $14. So that was a deal I couldn't pass up. So, and this is one pound. So, anyway, I know some people don't like the fake meats. I like them. I really like them. So, not that I 
only want to eat those. I also like, you know, other plant-based proteins. And I also like to make my own um, plant-based proteins. But for convenience sake, I like to keep these around. So these are going to be going in the freezer for future me. I'll show you what else I got. Another great deal. Okay, so for $5, they had this produce box available. They had these organic green beans. They were in the box. They had three boxes of mushrooms that I'm going to dehydrate. I'll probably cook one and two of them I'll dehydrate. So two of the white mushrooms. And then one of the portabella. So all that for five dollars. I thought that was a really good deal too. So they also had cherries marked down to $2.99 a pound. So I bought some of those. And I bought some tofurkey vegan roast beef because I like that and since I have the uh, cheddar, the uh, Violife cheddar cream cheese, I like that combination together. So, but that was like $4.49. It's ridiculous what they want for those types of vegan meats. But that'll last me for several, several days, so I went ahead and bought that. But anyway, so that was my little haul, and I think I did pretty good. What do you think? Um, they don't have vegan meats on sale very often here. Mark's does. Mark's usually has something, um, but not the local grocery stores. So, okay, uh, I still haven't had any breakfast. It's already 2 o'clock, so I'm just going to have... a. Uh, some French bread and some cheese. I'll be back. <laughs> My Walmart bread has a big hole in it. <sighs> well, anyway, I have a couple different cheeses here that I've had for a while that need to be eaten up. I have the Gouda, and I also have this one I haven't tried yet. It's been in my fridge for a while. It's double smoked cheddar, and I th think I got that at Aldi's quite a while ago. So I'm just going to make myself a little cheese plate, and that's going to be my breakfast. Okay, so here's my brunch. Just some sliced up cheese, some cherries, and a couple pieces of French bread. So a, a light brunch because I don't want to eat too much because then I won't want dinner. All right, I'll be back Hello. later. So I have been doing a lot of zip nada today after yesterday's uh, marathon kitchen redo. So um, I just need to catch up a little bit on my uh, on my resting. So while I'm doing that I thought I'd have a little chat and I was thinking about you know I really like to organize and I do a lot of it. Um, and I talked a little bit about the onion layers. Uh, when you, That's how I declutter and organize my home. I keep going through my house, and as I do, I, I get rid of more things. But the reason I'm doing that is not to live as a minimalist, but by doing that, I get rid of a lot of guilt, um, like... For days like today, where I didn't do anything. I mean, I, I watched a little YouTube. I um, did some reading. Um, I went to my daughter's, and I picked up some groceries for her. 
So not having a lot of things around my house makes me feel less guilty doing that. And also, when I'm looking around my space and I see this or I see that, and it's like, oh, I really don't even like that. And then I feel guilty because I spent money on it. Well, getting rid of things like that, I don't see it. So out of sight, out of mind. So for me, that works. Um, just getting it out of here and passing it on. And um, it gets rid of some of the guilt feeling for either not doing something or having spent money on it. Now, one thing that drives me absolutely crazy about myself is I organize in layers. And by that, I mean I'll organize a shelf, like in my garage. I'll organize a shelf. You know, I'll have gardening things. And, you know, I like to put like with like. So that, to me, is organized. And then I know what I have, and then I can use up uh, things that I do have without going out and buying more. But then what I do is, let's say I have a cart that has more stuff on it, and I'll put the cart in front of the shelf so that it's really a big issue getting to the shelf with the gardening things. And that just drives me crazy. But for some reason that's what I do so I'm trying to get away from that so I don't have two or three layers in front in front of what I've organized because that doesn't even make any sense to do it that way so I was thinking a lot about you know I've been redoing restyling my home and I've been trying to do it according to my style. Now, I like, in, in fashion, I like sort of a boho, chic, casual kind of, kind of vibe going. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to wear, you know, midi skirts all the time or, you know, but I like capris and t-shirts and... Um, um, skinny jeans and um, uh, peasant tops and things like that. Um, so the next time I go through my closet, which I've done probably six times already in the past two or three years, um, I'm going to declutter, and I keep saying it, I'm not going to try everything on because that's what I do, and then I get hung up in, oh, well, that still looks good, I'll probably wear it, because I don't, I don't wear it, because it's not really my style. Now, there's certain things that I know in my closet I should get rid of. I have some old, lightweight flannel shirts that they're great to wear with short sleeve t-shirts or long sleeve t-shirts and I like wearing them in the fall and the winter. They don't have holes or anything in them but they aren't the most chic things that I own but I feel very comfortable in them and if I get dressed in my nicer clothes in the morning I don't feel like working but if I put things like that on in the morning then that tells me that, okay, you know, you're ready to work. So those things, I know I should probably get rid of them because they're not very attractive, but I actually enjoy wearing them, so I plan on keeping those. But anyway, that's sort of my style, and then I'm going to plan on decluttering according to my style. And if it's frumpy or, you know, too old lady-ish, then um, it, it's got to go. So the same thing is with my house. Um, I'm trying to only keep those things that I've bought in the past 
that fit my decorating style. You know, sometimes you find something, um, let's say for an example, it's real modern or something, and you have very traditional taste. And you get it home, and you put it on your mantle or wherever you put it, and it's like, it doesn't really go with the room, so but you keep it because you spent money on it and you lost the receipt or whatever. So I'm trying very hard just to redecorate with the things I already have and not buying too much new. Now, for my living room, I did buy new pillows. Uh, I just bought a new couch cover because my couch is horrendous. But I'm actually going to send that one back because it just doesn't look good. So, you know, small things that will enhance the room. Um, you know, that I'll continue to to do the shelving that I put up in the kitchen was very very inexpensive the um, the wood was um, I think it was three or four dollars because each it was fence paneling you know like for outside very rustic very um, rough wood which is exactly what I wanted and each piece of wood was made into two shelves so it was very inexpensive the most expensive part uh, was the um, um, eh, what do you call it the brackets to hold up the shelves but even they weren't super expensive so but just doing things a little bit different and I restyled everything with what I already had um, so I'm very happy with it so I'm trying to decorate my house according to my style too and if it's not my style I'm putting it in the donation box. Um, so buying new things only that fit your style um, is probably a good idea. As far as living a good, abundant life, sometimes you have to ask yourself, what do I want? A lot of times we get involved with people in our life that are all too happy to say, this is my agenda and I want you to go along with my agenda and your agenda comes second to my agenda. Well that's not going to make you happy eventually you're going to become resentful of that because you're not getting any of your needs met you're just meeting the needs of another person or what they think you should do how you should do it what their style is and, you know, there needs to be a compromise. If that person really cares for you, and not just what can I do for them, they're going to go ahead and, you know, and be on board also with what you like and what you want. And sometimes that means some people are going to fall by the wayside once they figure out, they can't manipulate you into doing their bidding. Um, they may head on down the road. But to me, I view that as an opportunity to free up time to do the things that are actually important to you and that mean something to you. And that is not being selfish at all because, in my opinion, the person that is demanding that you do things their way is the one that's being selfish. It, it's, a, it's a give and take, you know. I mean, you should still be able to do those things that you want to do without criticism or without um, that other person making you feel bad or like the things that you like to do are silly or, um, you know, just things like that. You, you are a unique individual, 
and the things that you like to do is unique to you and you should be able to do those without having a critic. Now as far as the decluttering goes, and, and this again is unique to you, you know, if you like the idea of minimalism, that's great. Um, I, I'm more, I enjoy the things that I do have and the things that I do keep. I actually enjoy them. When I don't enjoy them anymore, then it's time to go. There, there's so much hype out there now about minimalism and, um, you know, getting rid of everything you've worked for. And I don't agree with that either. We have to find a comfort level of what we are comfortable with. And it doesn't matter if somebody comes into your house and says, Wow, you've got a lot of stuff. So what? As long as it's clean and neat and organized and you enjoy it, that's great. So, I mean, if a minimalist came into my house, that's probably what they would say. And I would probably go into their house and say, Boy, this is kind of stark, you know. Um, so we all have our own comfort level of how much stuff we have. Now, I'm trying to declutter and... Boom! I'm trying to declutter and get rid of things that I don't think will be useful. Uh, that I no longer enjoy because my tastes have changed. But I don't want to get rid of everything and then have remorse about doing that. That's why I think I take my time and just keep going through the different layers of my home. And I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm getting very comfortable in the rooms that I'm in. I still have a ways to go. Because I find what's happening is, as I declutter one room, sometimes I put those things in another room because I think, all right, I'm going to declutter something different from that room, but I think this item will look good in that room. But since I can't do it all at once, that room just kind of has to stay a little more cluttered until I get to it. But eventually, you know, I've done my bathroom, I've decluttered it now, and that stayed fine. My hallway has stayed fine. Uh, my living room is fine. Um, I'm working on my kitchen. My dining room will come next because, again, as I'm working on my kitchen, things are ending up in the dining room until I get everything done. So... You might want to think about giving yourself, if you're having a hard time getting started, giving yourself a 30-day challenge. And just every day, whether you feel like it or not, just dedicating 15 minutes for 30 days on one small thing, like a drawer or a, a, a cabinet or... A, portion of your closet or your underwear drawer or whatever it is but something that you can achieve in 15 minutes um, and take a box couple boxes with you throw away donate or whatever and then put the take everything out sort that drawer um, and then put, only put back what you're going to use or wear um, so, if you're having a hard time getting started, uh, give that a try, you know, baby steps. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. And sometimes you'll say, okay, I did that for 15 minutes, but there's this drawer too, and I think I'll declutter that one while I'm at it. So you spend a half an hour. And at the end of that month, you're going to find that you have actually made quite a bit of progress in your uh, decluttering. Um, all right, why do I declutter? Because once a room is decluttered for me, 
I feel calm and serene and then I like I said I don't have to feel guilty if I want to sit and read a book or if I want to watch some television or watch some YouTube I don't have all that little nagging going on in my head saying oh look at that oh my goodness look at look at over there you know so that's the main reason why I declutter so that's it for my little talk how about you guys why do you declutter how do you declutter um, where do you declutter do you do the Marie Kondo and do it all at once do you do room, one room at a time? Um, what are the strategies that you guys use? Because we can all use some uh, inspiration and some uh, ideas. So leave it in the comments below and feel free to comment on each other's. Um, I, I really enjoy when you guys have conversations with each other. Um, so it's about dinner time and I've been eating dinner really late. Um, I don't know, I just, I've been eating brunch late. I, I just get busy in the morning and then I don't eat brunch until 2 o'clock. So now it's 8 o'clock and it's getting to be time for dinner. But I still have um, some of the leftover not chicken pot pie that I think I'm just going to have with some some bread and call that good alright so I don't need to take you to the refrigerator to get that out so I'll meet you over at the stove okay well here is my leftovers from the uh, pot pie and being in the fridge it's thickened up this is milk that I got when I went for coffee at um, Ollie's and it's coconut milk so I'm just going to thin out this gravy a little bit because it's pretty thick not too much I don't want it soup and I microwaved my bread a little bit So I'm just going to thin this out a little bit, and then this is dinner tonight. I'm just going to eat this over my, my bread here and make the gravy a little thinner and just zap this for another 15-20 seconds, and that is going to be dinner. Easy peasy. All right, so that's it. Now this is the last of my leftovers. So tomorrow I'm going to have to cook something. I have no idea what. But I have plenty of choices. And I'm sure I will come up with something. Now this is not an epic meal. It was a really, really good pot pie. If you missed that video, uh, I did that a, a few days ago. Really tasty. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper since I did water this down a little bit with the milk. But that's it. Another leftover meal. So let me give this a taste. I know it was good with the pie crust. I'm sure it'll be good with the with the bread. And this is just the Walmart bread, which I really like. Mm-hmm. Very yummy. All right, my friends. 
That's all I have for you today. I want to wish you abundant blessings. I love you guys. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. God bless you, and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, comment, and like. Thanks for watching.